Managers and leaders set out the goals and objectives, and once those goals and objectives have been established, the next thing is to actually figure out how those goals are going to get accomplished. And one way to do that, a very practical way, is how we're going to structure our organization. In this chapter, you're going to learn several different ways that organizations can be structured and uh, when it's best to use one structure over another. Think about a large company with hundreds or even thousands of employees and you'll see why a formal business structure is so important. And some of the things that the structure is going to do is going to you know, define clearly who reports to who, who's going to do what, and again, the, the overall reaching purpose here is to accomplish the organization's goals and objectives. Henry Fayol came up with principles of management in 1919, and as you look at this list, unity of command, you know, having only one boss, division of labor, knowing what you're supposed to do, and uh, having authority within uh, the structure of the organization, it seems like common sense. But back in 1919, when he published this, there weren't many clear guidelines, and the Industrial Revolution really had changed uh, businesses and organizations. They became much larger, and so Fail helped us by giving us some clear guidelines and principles on how to manage people and structure organizations. The formal structure of an organization is usually displayed in an organizational chart. And the organizational chart gives a clear idea of the hierarchy, you know, who's the most important as far as position goes, and what the chain of command is, and uh, you know, who your immediate supervisor is, and who their supervisor is, and so on. And that's the importance of an organizational chart. As you read the chapter, you're going to learn about uh, centralized authority and decentralized authority. And in centralized authority, uh, the decisions are made at the top. They make the rules and everybody else has to follow them. In decentralized authority, the decision making is actually uh, given to some of the lower level um, satellite offices. And many years ago, I used to work for a state government agency in, uh, in Idaho, and it had satellite offices out throughout the state. And whenever I would visit the satellite offices, there was always some sort of a re uh, resentment in many cases to the central office that made these decisions that affected how they had to operate their own individual offices. And in many cases, the decision that the central office made really weren't applicable to the way they dealt with their clients uh, in their individual cities. This chapter will also introduce you to uh, four basic ways <coughs> to structure an organization. You'll learn about line organizations and when to use those, line and staff organizations, matrix styles organizations, and cross-functional self-managed teams. As you read this chapter, you will definitely find out that how you structure an organization affects how things get done, and it's a very important process. Um, of course, just a brief introduction. Make sure you do spend time studying the chapter carefully.